Hi everyone, back for round two. This time up against my opponent Taz, who proudly wears his Kyber Combatant and General Skywalker profile here. Uh, matches his playstyle, it's pretty offensive. Uh, he has a pretty good roster. Always likes to go offense heavy, like I said. Uh, has some interesting premature gearing choices like Resistance Trooper at Relic 3 here. Now, if you're one of the people who saw the quests for the Galactic Legends and you already started gearing up your Resistance Trooper, your uh, Finn, your First Order Stormtrooper, etc., I would advise you against doing so because while he has a Relic 3 Resistance Trooper, I might have Relic 3 Grandmaster Yoda, for example. So. He will get matched up against tougher opponents while taking up these characters prematurely and won't have as much use for him uh, as, as much use for him here as he would for Grandmaster Yoda, for example, or for B2 or Mother Talzin, Old Daka, etc. So you have to be quite mindful about who you uh, gear up first. Now, an interesting thing to note about this opponent is you can see here is Grandmaster Yoda is just gear 12, which is not that common anymore at my or our GP. And he doesn't have the Zeta on Bastilla, so what he actually had to end up doing was use his Padme on my General Grievous, and he used his Jedi Knight Revan against my Night Sisters. And I didn't think his Jedi Knight Revan would be able to pull that off because it's really not too strong, but he was able to. So what my opponent actually did is one shotting my board. Uh, I was actually considering to go a little bit heavier on defense even as he uh, historically always went super heavy on offense, but I felt a bit bad after the previous opponent couldn't clear any zones. So I didn't want to go too heavy. And I figured if I put this in the front line, he will lose some banners. And indeed his average is like 55-ish banners. So he lost them on most fights, but he did one shot everything by keeping pretty much everything for offense. Don't remember. Yeah, I just had some weak teams here in the back that didn't really matter. And over here, uh, Karth Wampa and some kind of Rebel mix. Pretty weak stuff. Uh, it's nice because I get to set the precedent towards opponents that I set a strong front wall and a pretty weak back wall. And then when the time is right and I get an opponent where I want to do something radically different, I can make him expect this exact setup and then throw in something totally different and uh, throw off his expectations. So uh, right now I've just been repeating this a couple times and then very soon at some point I'll just like completely mix it up and uh, catch someone off guard. That's the plan anyway. So that's a nice thing you can do about the Grand Arena history because a lot of people check it. You can set certain precedents like I always set Darth Revan on defense or I always keep him for offense. And then when they don't expect it, you change it up and uh, obviously, like if you're looking at someone's Grand Arena history and they've done the exact same things like six times in a row, you're going to expect them to repeat it because you think that they're not smart and just repeating everything. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're not being smart. They could just be quite clever and use that as an opportunity to fool you. So he's gotten a pretty high score. I can't afford any mistakes today. Um, in the front wall here, he's got his Grievous team, which has BB-8 in there and a Relic 7 B1, Relic 3 Magna Guard as well. So uh, I probably won't be using my Jedi Knight Revan against this either, mostly because of the Relic 7 B1. Uh, I don't get to fight those a whole lot, but the 10,000 physical damage is really quite something. And with a few AoEs, he can quickly do a lot of damage to my entire team. So if I can avoid the risk of losing here, which would cost me to win, then I will happily take that and use Padme, which can still lose. It certainly can, but at least the risk will be a little bit lower, hopefully. Uh, now that I have said that, of course, we're about to watch a spectacular fight. Then he's got his first order here with Kylo Ren, uh, sorry, with Hux, Kylo Ren a masked lead. Uh, no Zetas on Hux. And then in the bottom, he put his Geonosians with Droidica. Uh, which is a little bit different from the usual. Now, I think I've only fought a uh, team with Droidica once in there. And the good thing about Droidica is he uh, like gives some people with Jawas trouble, as far as I remember, uh, as he doesn't suffer as much. Though with the Zeta, he's definitely assisting and hitting Jawas. So 
he should also stack some of those up. But if Droidica survives while all of the Geos get blown up by detonators, then he can just kill the last character that's left and uh, get a hold. But I don't have any Jawas, so I'm not sure <laughs> what he put this in for. Uh, if you fight this with Treya, then uh, if the Droidica is strong enough, he would be able to have a chance at shooting out Sion. Uh, so for that reason, I'll probably just end up bringing my Nihilus. I'm not quite sure how much damage this guy can do. Oh, he's got a speed arrow, a crit damage triangle. Oh my. Why would you even slice this mod? That's the real question. I mean, I know some people do this stuff to put six dot mods on their pilots because then they never feel tempted to move them to a better character. But I mean, he's done it in the end. It's on Droidica here. Droidica is not a pilot, so strange. Yeah, that's a, a very unique mod you've got there, sir. Um, okay, so he's not that heavy on the damage. What about Bosk here? How fast is he? 275. I also want to know actually Geobrute Alpha. 271. I think I'm faster with Scion than this guy. I should be. Um, <clears throat> let's get started against the Geos then. I think I'll use Treya here. So let's just go over it quickly. Treya over here. Uh, sorry, over here. They switched them up in the interface, I guess. Uh, against Bosk, I'll probably use CLS. Rage at a training against Kylo and a Mast, and then Padme against Grievous. And for the back, that would leave me with Jedi Knight Revan, with my Nest, with my Bounty Hunters, with EP, who might get me some progress towards a feat, and then with my Geos. So hopefully that's enough. I don't expect him to have a strong back wall, but also not necessarily a weak one. Uh, just more of these kinds of teams, so uh, I can't afford any mistakes. So let's start by not making mistakes. Going to go for the Geos team here, and I will use my Treya in this case. I could try out Nest, but I would rather not risk. <coughs> Sorry, uh, I would rather not risk timing out. And I'll bring Nihilus because I don't really have any use for him elsewhere. Scion should be tanking for the most part, and I just don't want to risk losing over such a silly thing. Because I have only fought a variant with Droidica once, I think, and it was quite long ago. So my Scion goes first, barely, hopefully lands pain on everyone. There we go. Uh, this causes quite a bit of lag. That's less ideal. Wow, pretty big counter there from the Brood. Mm, Scion not looking too healthy here. All right, let's give him the protection up. That would have been a hit from Spy. I'm pretty sure it would have been game over. I'm going to dispel him. Oof. Close one, but that is ultimately why you also bring some other character if you're not quite sure you're going to make it. I might end up dying here because it's so close. They'll equalize probably. No, wow, that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I don't think I've ever drained them out. There we go, fifty-nine. Now we've made it to chromium. Okay, good enough first fight. Then up against Bosk here, uh, I've thought of using Ray Jedi training here and I could use something else against the Kylo Ren Mast team, but Ray Jedi training against Kylo Ren Mast is really overpowered, whereas CLS is usually a bit, especially because my CLS is gear 12, it's a little bit sloppy and slow, I'm not a huge fan of that, whereas CLS against Bosk is quite a breeze usually. so. Going to go in with those guys. And I will bring old Ben. Uh, don't really need him, I think. It's a bit of a safeguard, I suppose. 
just in case the bounty hunters end up going a bit too hard on me. Uh, I like the turn meter removal, I like the AoE ability block. You do lose a protection banner, but I'll happily take that for the certain win. So we start, wow, this was a visual glitch here with the other abilities showing. Start by hitting you. Uh, I don't want you to be burning me. And, hmm. Just thinking here what exactly I want to do. If I hit him with Chewie, he will die. I think I'll go for Boba here. Nah, that didn't really work out. I have to keep in mind that I get the tenacity boost from the Bosque lead here. So let's kill him. Uh, we'll put up some buffs. Kill you. Pretty sure that should have been a double counter there. It's a little smashy. Okay, this should kill him. Uh, I might keep all of my banners here, I'm not sure. I shouldn't speak too soon, because they're about to take some turns. Let's get a stun, hopefully. Yes, thank you. Now dispel you. I don't mind Bosk taunting that much, because I can circumvent it to kill Greedo, and this way Bosk doesn't take a turn. That damages me, if that makes sense. Smash. Oh, so close. Although it should still give me the point. No, come on. I feel scammed. Oh well. They're down. Let's see what he's got in the back. He's got Shakti. Oh my, what is this team? Shakti clone. Ah, I think I saw this in his defensive record somewhere. And then a Talzin lead Night Sister team. Okay with a somewhat stronger Asajj. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll probably use JKR on this. And I'm not quite sure about this one here. This is a strange team. You would think you could use Nest against it, but the R2 keeps everyone stealthed. Uh, actually thinking though, you would not put the stealth on L3. Feels like he's just kind of thrown his remaining characters together rather than there being some sort of synergy going on here. So she's got 52 and 67 and L3. Yeah, substantially lower, I figured. So Shaq is actually the one who gets the smoke screen. All the others are hidden. So you would take out Shaq first. I suppose if you use Nest though, then you don't counter as much. You've got tenacity down from HK here and then R2 would be able to stun you so that's not really ideal I think also L3 <clears throat> can put defense down so I don't think any of them can do enough damage maybe HK with a big shot though I kind of doubt it if he's not under Sith Empire so Nest should be possible, uh, but I think I also have other teams still. I could use my Django against it, for example. Uh, so I'll probably do that. So let's go up top. Uh, this will probably be the toughest fight. I'm not really looking forward to it. Because it's always very messy. The way they start is quite brutal. Uh, and this is somewhere where I would have a chance of losing. If you randomly don't have protection up or taunt on GK and suddenly Grievous decides to go for Anakin with a big AoE uh, or, or the, the, the last special, then you can quickly lose him. So I'll probably use C3PO here, I think, because his translation gives me that extra health. Though I do like Shaq a lot as well for the dispels and the high courage. So I think I'll bring her instead. Might end up being a mistake, but we're about to find out. So they go crazy in the beginning. Oh, that B1 hits so ridiculously hard. Like here, if, if GK would not have been taunting, 
and he would have gone for Anakin. It is just too painful. So uh, I definitely want to kill BB-8 here. I don't want to stall that any longer, but I'm going to do it this way because Grievous will go first. I will full on counter him. Ah, not quite a kill. Uh, I need to be mindful here. Anakin can't get any buffs, that's not good. Uh, an AoE would drop Grievous under max health, but he will get healed back up, so that's all right. I have to be careful here that I don't lose him. And he cannot gain any buffs, that's an issue at the moment. I also don't want B2 to constantly get triggered because it makes his situation worse. So I'll take the risk here. I don't really have a choice. I'm going to lose him. Oof. Awful. Really need Padme to get a cleanse here, but she can't, unfortunately. Uh, also can't get protection up with the basics. Yeah, this is not looking too great. So I'll just drop his stacks a lot. I can make GK taunt here. I'll have to. Uh, I don't want to kill B1, uh, Magna Guard here, sorry, uh, B1. Because if I do, I'm going to lose a couple characters. So I have to be super careful. I have to get Padme's heal in, but she can't yet. This is why I'm not a fan of these kind of battles. If you chain up the kills the wrong way, you can really end up suffering a lot. I'll hit him once here. I kind of just need to stall some time. I think Grievous is going to do his big hit on GK, which is okay with me. Yes. Ah, uh, he's so close to dying. Um, but maybe we'll get the heal in and that's what I need to be able to pull through. Okay, just do a basic. And now we get the heal. That one got pretty close there. So I'm going to go for you. Oh, so close. Okay, he's down. Grievous goes crazy twice. He's having a party. Can anyone? Ah, Shock herself can kill him. All right. 55, that's as expected. Uh, it's just a nasty fight. You have to be really careful about when you pick off characters. If your Padme is unable to heal, that's why C3PO could be handy, I guess, to get your specials back sooner if you manage to build up the translation. But it's really difficult with B2 constantly stripping it. So you have to be quite careful of how you handle it. And B1 not critting, but still heal dealing such high damage is quite risky uh, when using this team. So uh, here I will be using my Ray Jedi training. Don't think I've actually fought Hux before. Uh, do I want to bring anyone else or just leave T3 out? Because T3 just heals them up with the debuffs. Uh, T3 is really nice against some other team compositions, but don't really need him here. Um, don't know if I want to bring either of these. It's a pretty weak team. I'll just go in undersized. Get an extra banner. Uh, start with the burn for the AOE expose and turn meter control. I don't want Kylo Ren and Mass to taunt, but I also don't want Hux to cleanse here. So I think in this case, no, I'll just take you. I'm gonna stun him. Yes. And I will go for you. Hopefully R2 assists here, or, I mean, I'm totally okay with this. <laughs> so many turns, crazy. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to stall towards the end for sure. Now I put it on you, because I really want to recover the protection banners or the undersizing is for nothing. Um, I need to control you a bit, you crazy bastard.
definitely one to take him down. Um, yeah, I might as well kill him. So foresight on BB-8. Okay, so I'm going to go for Kylo Ren first here, mostly because if he manages, manages to do a single AOE towards the end, you can lose all of your protection banners, whereas Kylo Ren amassed, he only really counters and that doesn't do too much. Uh, nothing you can't recover from anyway. Uh, hopefully Finn, uh, I thought he would get the heal already. Okay, I do want to stun. Just use some non-combat moves and I should be one heal away from max banners here. Hopefully I don't kill. It's getting close actually. Uh, yeah, I mean Finn is very slightly short but I don't think that's going to matter. Yeah, I'm good. Hopefully no surprises in the back. Garth and Newt. Uh, so this one's a bit low on gear. Still not to be underestimated. All right. So JKR, Bounty Hunters, I suppose. Uh, I can use EP with Thrawn over here. Normally seen, I don't really need Thrawn, but it's nice to control Zalbar to de-risk the fight. And then I'll use Geos against my favorite Newt. Uh, get that done. They're not too high geared. They can still surprise me, I suppose, but I mean, gear 10 Leia. Let's get into this. Didn't actually check any speeds, but I mean, with these gear levels, it's, uh, even if they all go first, I should be okay-ish here. So call you. Should be able to get through Sunfac relatively quickly. Cleanse the extortion. Uh, I hope I can end with 60 banners. That would be very nice. Okay. Uh, I think... I'm thinking of using this. Hmm. Do I want to? I, I like unstealthing doesn't really matter. I'm thinking if I want to one shot Dooku or Newt. Newt will just come back, so I think I'll go for Dooku here. Because he is very annoying. Ah, of course. He still got a turn. I thought I would before him, but suppose that works. Uh, I don't want to use the heal just yet. Because I'm sure they'll still get some attacks in. I'll go for what next? Uh, actually, I want to kill Newt here. Mostly because when he revives, he usually immediately gets the extortion. And that messes with me. There he goes. Yep. Predictable, sir. Uh, I will cleanse all of this stuff. And hopefully my Brute Alpha can still get a turn into heal. Unlikely. Well, it's 60. They still healed up with the last hits there. All right. Uh, Karth here then. I'll just go to Empire. It's usually just quicker to do this and go to your loadouts and try to find where exactly you save that version of the team. Uh, so I should actually check how far am I along with the feet for the stuns. Oh, 65. That's a bit less than I had hoped. Uh, and this is the last attempt that I have to get it. So that's not great. That is not great. I'll just claim all the feats. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Who can still stun? Jedi Knight Revan with direct focus, that's gonna happen like twice, probably. Um, yeah, EP obviously, but that's pretty limited. Then Bosk, <laughs> he's gonna get two stuns in maybe. So it has to come from EP, but he would have to do it seven times like on each character. So that's, mm, that's looking like a stretch. Maybe if I bring my Dooku, I can take that number up a little. And I would leave out Tarkin. Uh, yeah, I might try that. It's just gear 11, but I don't foresee him being in trouble. Okay, now I want to be careful. You always have to be careful. If you use Vader against his team and you don't bring Thrawn, you really don't want to drop someone under max protection at this point because it really hurts you as Zalbar will taunt. So in this case here, I fracture Zalbar, so it's not an issue, but in many cases it will be an issue. Okay, I like to pick off Kandorus first. So I will stun, hopefully stun mission here. All right, that's one stun down. Five, that's six. Uh, I would not want to kill them too fast, but I also don't want them to stick around so long that I start bleeding banners, so. I'll try to make a bit of tempo. That's another stun. I'm not going to be counting them. I'm really not. It's too labor intensive. If I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. It's whatever. Thrawn can also stun if they have ability block on them. So I could land some and then keep hitting mission. Uh, I want to stack up the defense on you. Okay, let's try to land some, those are shocks. Uh, go for Johani, Johani is almost out of stun. Well, I mean, it works, so. Uh, let's hit this one because your ability blocked, it counts. Don't really need to use a saber throw because that would speed up the fight. Oh, she popped. Okay, well, I'm not going to be very far into it yet, but uh, let's try to get some more. Very exciting. Am I going to make it or not? I mean, I should be able to if I just keep stacking his defense. So now I should start hitting. Uh, do it this way. He doesn't have ability block anymore. Okay. And the more I hit him with Dooku, the more defense he stacks. So that's actually the way I want to try to get more stunts. I don't think I'll be close enough yet. But we'll see. My guess is I got like 20, 25 ish there. Oh, six to go. Yeah, I don't think I could have stalled out the fight any longer anyway. Um, so this should be interesting. There was also a reason why I went undersize on the Kylo Ren team. Uh, as I thought I would get more stuns in with R2, but they're just too weak. You pick them off so quickly. All right, so I need to get six stuns somehow. Do I even want to bother? Because uh, what options do I have? Nest can... Oops, that's a mistake. Nest Bastilla can stun. Uh, Janana Revan's direct focus stun. So I guess I could, but it's a bit risky. I could try to stall on zombie here to try to get 
multiple stuns in still with both Bastilla and Jedernite Revan on zombie but someone will still be alive and constantly calling people from the grave under Talzin lead and that could start damaging me quite a bit uh, and the logical thing to do there would be to leave spirit alive as uh, Asajj would ramp up too much damage, Daka would revive anyone and Talzin would use her plague uh, which I'm not a huge fan of, so that's probably what I'll end up trying. But if it looks at any point like I'm just risking the match, I'm just going to finish it and not uh, do anything silly. <clears throat> so six stuns. Uh, I'll bring a full team, because why not? And I'll go for. I'll probably end up going for Asajj first here. I really dislike her. Even though she's the strongest, I should be able to take her out here. I really dislike her buff removal. It's so annoying. Um, just want to gain some turn meter here. So kill her twice. I didn't actually check if that was a stun on her. That was not the smartest. Let's kill her here. Spread the buffs. Resist the AoE plague. So I've got it on a couple people. And then she gets brought back. I should be careful with the Oda. I'm going to kill too quickly here. I mean, it's not a problem, actually, if I kill quickly. Uh, take you out. As long as I have enough time towards the end. Yeah, I've got to be so careful here with Asajj coming back. She can just too easily get some kills. I'll take Daka out first, probably. But I want to get rid of her. Ugh, oh, I really don't like this. Um... Let's swap here. That's a stun. Yeah, I think I'm just going to murder this team. I really don't want to mess around just for a feat. Strip your foresight. Take a bonus turn. All right, it's not full, but this is good enough. So this is the point in the fight I wanted to get to. And now it would be a matter of getting Bastilla and Jedernet Revan to take enough turns, constantly stripping, stripping the foresight, uh, also trying to recover my protection banners, that's not a bad idea. Uh, Bastilla here. So I suppose I can do this. I'll just see, it really depends on what Spirit does. The specials are okay because she doesn't call anyone from the grave. Uh, basics, it depends. If she calls in Asajj, I don't like it. If she calls in anyone else, it's usually okay. So that's another stun. Strip the Foresight. To mitigate some damage, put up my Foresight. For when she goes. Still have two minutes. Recover some more protection. Uh, I think everyone's pretty much full. I can get Hermit Yoda one here, just in case. I would love to do the. I could actually. I can do the turn meter swaps when uh, there's foresight up on spirit, because then I can get my stuns in quicker. Yeah, I lost a little bit there. Okay, uh, do a direct focus. I should be almost at six stuns here. I'll just do one more probably and call it a day. 
Mm, and if that doesn't cut it, then so be it. For anyone watching this, remembering the uh, defeat where you had to get a certain amount of kills with Jedi or whatever against whatever, like, what was it, like 24, 25 ish kills? This would be a fun way to get them, where you just farm zombie over and over. So hopefully you can get a stun kill, and ah, it's just going to be a basic. It's whatever, 60 banners. Is that good enough? Might be one away. No, I got it. Okay, good. I mean, it's 50 points. It just feels silly to put in so much effort for that. And then you have this one here where you kill people with a double bladed lightsaber. I suppose I could have gone for that with Bastilla if I would have scrolled down a little and looked at it here. Uh, because that was a really easy way to get it. She got a couple of those kills, but not enough. Um, yeah. I'm just not so excited about the feats anymore. Used to be, but they just seem like a bit of a drag. I enjoy the fighting a lot, but it's pretty similar in Territory Wars, where we used to have those special kinds of Territory Wars, where you would be matched up with... Uh, Let's see here, I'll use these guys with what, since he's just sitting around. Maybe the full team does better banner-wise, but I mean, we've got this in the bag. So, taunting tech on Mr. Bosk, please don't misclick. It's just so freaking weird to see R2 do a smoke screen and absolutely nothing happens. Weapon tech on Django. Now my game is pretty laggy, it seems. But it's just because I'm recording on the laptop and doing this at the same time. It's usually not that amazing. I don't have some high-end gaming computer because I wasn't really anticipating recording my... Uh, Grand Arenas or anything like that. Such a strange team I'm fighting. Um, it's just, I really just want to get L3 out of here. I don't care too much. Heck, put it on Dengar. I don't... Would be nice if Watt could put the healing tech on himself. I would love that, but unfortunately, not an option. Uh, let's go for HK here, actually. A stun. Oh, wait, I don't need those anymore. Yeah, you can mark him all you want, but I can't get to him. Thank you. There we go. And we got the payout. Hopefully, there we go. I was hoping Dengar's mines would be back. Uh, pretty sure he did absolutely nothing there. thought Shaq would get hit there as well. Mm -hmm. So she'll counter a bunch, but I should be able to end with full protection on Bosk. I'll lose a banner on what, like I said beforehand, but that's okay. It's a lot of turns you take in there, Shaq. And that's the kill shot. Or not, wow. Disappointing damage. I <laughs> actually lost the protection banner. Oh well. Um, yeah, this was fine. Don't know what exactly the final score is. Somewhere over 1900, I think. 1913. So 20 more banners. So you basically, across every fight, 
lost a couple more banners and it ended up making quite a difference even if i would have lost the fight actually if i would have tried to undersize some of this stuff i could have undersized this fight i would have still been able to make it so i had a decent margin there uh, my opponent did a great job he still got a good score that will help him towards kyber so uh, that's quite nice uh, this is historically how i played more of my grand arenas where i do expect them to clear uh, so that it can still get high scores but sometimes it takes a lot of effort to try to balance that carefully and it can just be easier to look at them going super offense heavy and thinking hey let's uh make it this way ah i've got my opponent here congratulating me whoop i can't type apparently Uh, though I think he knows how his de defense performs. Uh, not sure if he's too curious about checking it out, but I mean, could always be interesting. Uh, I was quite surprised to find his team in the back here. I think he should be able to formulate something different. Um, I mean, if it works for him, I don't know if it has historically worked for him, but it's a strange one. I like the Talzin lead here because it's a little harder to get good banners against if you're not using Jedi Knight Revan or Padme. Uh, so that was interesting enough and the Grievous team well that was a pretty tense fight uh, because of B1 dealing so much damage pretty interesting choice for his relic there so uh, that wraps up the fight uh, it was actually watching me attack so that's quite fun um, yeah hope to see you in the final round I'm not quite sure yet who I will be up against should be one of these guys Dark Lord Ren Okay, he's definitely got a General Skywalker counter. He's made that clear. Let's see how fast is his Darth Revan. 334. What kind of roster? 4.5, so he's actually Division 1 by now. And then this other guy here who runs a General Skywalker. Now, one tip that you might sometimes be wondering about, who will I be fighting in the final round? You could, for example, check out what is their current rank in the championship. Now, this guy's rank 714 in the Chromium division. And this other one is 4050. So it would seem more likely that this guy, since he is higher ranked right now, and it's still early on in the tournament, that he will be my opponent and that the other one won't be. But it's not a guarantee, of course. It can just be some kind of indicator. And if you want to be 100% certain, then before the start of the second round, you could note down their ranks or scores to get an idea. And then after the round is up, you can see by how much points they rise, like each of them in lifetime score. And that would possibly give you an idea of who you fight up against. If you're so curious that you cannot wait a day, uh, that's a way to check it out. So anyways, that was my round. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you for the finals.